Yeah. Like, they're going to be the owners of the concession stand. And I thought, like, you know how you always want to outreach to the students? Like, you want them to, like, go and do whatever they're doing in class. She said, like, she could have one or two students come in and help that her with each game. So they could really see, like, how the graphs reflect what they are really selling. This really fits our middle school students because we're supposed to, according to the state of Indiana, we have advisory standards that we're supposed to be covering. They should be learning 21st century skills. They need to figure out what they want to be when they grow up. So we're doing, it's more like we're doing a lot of mini apprenticeships. Um, we're also going by brain-based learning, which says if your brain has a place to put the information it's learning, it's more likely to keep it. I've always been a traditional math teacher, kind of a talking head. Um, this is how you do the work, you know, um, I do it, they're supposed to do it after me, and the big question in my mind is like, you know, when they don't do it, it's like, what, do you just not believe me? <laughs> you know, like, this is how to do it? Um, but, you know, I feel like um, I've gotten as far as I can go in terms of that traditional teaching style, and you know, in terms of what I can accomplish with my students, that in terms of, um, uh, teaching the enduring understandings, the essential knowledge and skills they need in order to be able to not just pass the core forward, but really apply the algebra later on in life. Um, you need a much more authentic learning model, and the project-based learning model is much more authentic. Hey, on their menu is a bunch of different flavors, but that doesn't really make a difference because she doesn't charge extra for the flavors. My big goal is that there's a world beyond textbooks and examples and here's 50 problems that you should do tonight for homework, we'll come back and talk about it and learn that way. Um, but math truly is related to the outside world and that's the hardest thing for a lot of teachers to realize is they know more about their subject area than what they think they do because we have been constricted and confined to textbooks for so long. Um, in addition to, there's other ways you can integrate your projects and I've seen that a lot come out in the program is that some people say, I think I can relate this to my science class and my English teacher and, and that's what learning should be. It shouldn't be, I learned this in one classroom then I have to forget it. It's, I can combine different classrooms in the outside world and my mom told me this about the project we're doing and that's how, so it was, it's an eye opener for people and I think that's what, what inspires me to make sure that I'm trying to get that point across and giving feedback or starting project-based learning. Paper document, but my, my, my thought was it would just be a, here's what I'm doing, this is what, you know, the money is going to. They would draft a letter like that um, and then they would... Some people have really dug deep. There's some, some participants have chosen to work with financial advisors in their community to take a look at. Um, and students, which works great with the age level, juniors and seniors in high school who can look at um, planning long term or for the future and colleges coming up or interns and careers. 56 is your change. We had some who worked with concession stands with their local community the summer months are coming ahead or in wrapping up the, the summer games and tournaments. Um, what kind of of items would you promote to sell as based on data given from a community partner. We had a jams to jellies project, we had a pool project. I had somebody come in with a Batman pool design they created today. Um, Key to the Crypt was fun. This Algebra 2 project was the idea of creating um, a code that couldn't be broken to protect your software. Um, and so the students had to create their code using different algebraic functions. Um, really interesting project, really great idea that I think kids will have a good buy into. It's called Flooring the Competition and it, I'm, my business partner is Greensburg Learning Center and the, the director Jim Cummings there, I'm working with him and they want to do some renovation projects in the Learning Center and so it's a fairly old building so they've been doing some renovations already so I kind of scaled it down to just the flooring renovations the real-life application of this is they're going to be acting as architects and their final project product will be a spec book which is short for specialty book and so uh, which is something that architects typically do and it gives the contractors it maps out these are the things that need to happen with the car with the flooring. Uh, we had a few people talk about they wanted to integrate their projects with um, science or with with English were the two I specifically heard. Um, one of them is designing a golf course with eighth grade students and he said my science teacher is doing Newton's three laws and wants to know like what ideas can I bring back to that person about um, how we might tie the two together so we brainstormed can you write a hole-in-one how-to guide can you have a science math day what could you do to um, just do crazy things like that but 
the more these folks today that have invested all this time into it can take it back to their other teachers and say, I've got this great idea, maybe we can integrate, or could you even just give advice or do a workshop, do a mini lesson with my kids on how to write a paper or a, a news article that they'll be turning into math class for that project. Um, it's bound to spread and people will see the relevance in that. Yeah, or it, I mean, in some of them, I mean, depending on how high they set their prices, they may only make 10%. Or they may want to make 100% markup. So the kids get to choose. Yeah, the kids can choose their, their markup amount. Yeah. The mantra of, of Echo 15 is that you, you have to have an educator and a business person in the room together for us to be able to, to move forward as a region uh, from an economic development standpoint. That, that you just it just isn't going to happen as separate conversations. And so for, and the, one of the stated objectives of, of ECHO 15 and one of the purposes for which we are funded is to, to raise the, the, um, the educational preparedness of the, the job seekers and job doers in, in this region. Um, and so Math Matters was, was a, a, a perfect illustration of that. And the Education Coalition has been um, working to bring together educators and industry folks for many years. Um, and you know, they're great people in both those worlds, but they're um, at times are um, different kinds of languages spoken. And so uh, the Math Matters initiative has provided an opportunity to bring together educators, math educators, and industry folks uh, working on real life uh, problems that, that, uh, that then students can um, attempt to solve. And so what I think it's taking away is just uh, you know, a better understanding of PBL and a better understanding of how to address the question that so many math students ask, why do we need this? It's project based, and so it's based on real life applications. Um, so hopefully that question won't even arise.